guys, Sugar Tensei here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys my art process. So this will be a walkthrough of everything that I do, from my planning to my rough drafts to how I pick my colors when I do my watercolor. So I hope that this will help you guys um, and answer some of your questions that you guys had about my processes. And yeah, so let's get started. So the first step that I usually do is write down everything I want to include in my art piece. So it's kind of just like brainstorming. Um, there's many theme themes and things that I usually draw, such as telephone poles, um, fish, stuff like that, and I just write everything down. And then normally I just find a theme in that and then I go from there. down and as you can see these are just normally things that I draw anyways and I did have an idea of drawing something about a tower so I was thinking a tower made out of like random things like maybe a tower made out of books or cups or something like that um, I just thought it'd be cool I haven't drawn anything like that before so I wanted to try it out and here I was thinking about doing something with a light source at the bottom so normally the sun is like overhead, or maybe there's like a light overhead, but I've never really done anything with the light source directly at the very bottom, so I was thinking about trying that out too. So with these things in mind, let's get started down to the rough drafts. Rough drafts usually consist of many thumbnails. So thumbnails are just super small drawings where you can get your ideas down and stuff, so no need to focus on detail or anything. Uh, it's just a place um, where you don't have to worry really about anything. So I'm just gonna do some little drawings and I'll get back to you guys. Right, so I finished a few ideas and I'll explain some of them to you guys just so you can see what went on through my head. So first of all, it's basically a girl and she's sitting on telephone wires and the wires are coming up from the water um, and I'm guessing there will be a bunch of like street signs coming out of the water too and there will be fish swimming in the water and obviously there's going to be a glow from a light underneath the water coming up I'm not really sure about this one, it seems a bit too simple to me but I kind of like this one it's basically a girl again and she's standing on a tower of books from underneath, she's being lighted, kind of like a spotlight by traffic light signs. The sun will also be shining from underneath. So there's a light source from underneath and from the street lamps. And I was thinking there would be like a ginormous fish and it could like look at her. I don't know. I was thinking maybe a fish or maybe a whale of some kind. And for this one, it's a stop sign and I was thinking about having a girl crouch on them and it'll be coming up through the clouds again and then obviously the background will have many like different small lamps and telephone poles and maybe there will... I don't know where the fish will come in the fish might just be in the air like flying fish kind of and the first one so just a girl sitting on the clouds and the background is just this huge like whale, which is really similar to this one. So I think I might keep this ginormous whale in the background theme because I really like it. And I think I might include the swimming fish, like the flying fish in the air as well. And the girl being lighted by street lamps because I also like this element. Yeah, so another idea came to mind actually. I was thinking of doing like adding these lamps. But like, um, these lamps would have stars inside them, so they'd be star-powered lamps. Um, but then I still have to find out a good design for them. But I really like that idea, so I'm just going to add that to my list. So now that my a few thumbnails are done, I'm just going to do one more draft and see if I'm pleased with that. Basically, there's this whale in the background. And then it's coming out of another panel, so this is going to be a panel and it's basically diving out of it. And then there's this girl here, she's sitting on a tower of books, which emerges from the clouds. And then from the clouds also comes 
a bunch of lamps and street signs and stuff. And she's illuminated by the street signs as well as the sun from underneath. And I'm still not sure what I will include in this panel. And there's also going to be flying fish all around her. Alright, so now I'm going to start sketching this onto watercolor paper. to find some references for these three lamps. I mean, this is a super rough sketch, but I want it to be as accurate as possible. Oh, and while sketching this, I just got another idea. So, since we have lots of books, we can have some of the papers flying out of the books, and they can be just flying in the wind, and I think that would make it look very cool as well. Yeah, I don't really know how to draw flying fish either, so I searched up a reference, and I'm just gonna go by this. So I do have a few flying fish down. Um, I think I, ba I think I got the basic shape of it. If it's not that accurate, uh, it's alright, I guess. Here are a few poses. I can just alternate between them, and I think I, since I got the basic structure of the fish down, I can make my own combinations as well. Alright, alright. I suddenly got an idea, and I kind of like it. Um, I might add like some more details after, but... So I was thinking this whole top panel, right? Um, I could fill it with water, so it's kind of like a vessel for water. And then I was thinking I could have the water leak out of the panel. And obviously the whale's coming out from the water, so I'm gonna have to draw like water droplets and stuff. Anyways, I'm just gonna draw what I can for now. You know, I was actually thinking we could modify the flying fish as well to, to have feathers. So like, there could be like birds and fish combined. So this would be like a normal flying fish, right? With fins. But then, what if, what if you made it like feathers? I mean, that kind of looks weird. Uh, I'm not sure about that. You know what, we can, we can try it. And if it doesn't work out, we can change it. But I think that this picture is a bit too bland still, so... Um, if we can change one thing a bit, then I think that would benefit the whole thing. Alright, so now it's time for line art. And the thing about line art is... There are many color choices. I know most people like to stick with black, and that's fine as well. It's just that for these kind of paintings, where I want a more softer look, I tend to go with brown pens. I was thinking about getting some new pens as well, like maybe some blue or red ones, but today I'm gonna go with a brown fine liner. Oh, and a tip for lining is when you have a bunch of items in a picture and they like overlap each other, it's best to do the ones that are closer to you first. Um, for example, the flying fish will be overlapping the girl and the whale and the street signs a bunch of times So they would be the ones closest to me and by outlining them first and then moving backwards uh, It helps a lot and it makes things a lot easier because Maybe for example if you outline the street sign and then you notice that this spot is really empty It could use a fish then You're gonna have to go over the lining with the fish and then somehow correct it and yeah, it's gonna be a pain, so I suggest you do the ones that are closest to you first.
normally use these brushes. They're nothing special. And my Winsor & Newton Comet watercolors. I will show you guys the process of choosing colors. It's not very complex or anything. It's basically what I think um, will look the best. So yeah. So to talk a little bit about what I'm thinking for this. Uh, basically, this part I'm, I'm imagining will be like a dark color. And then from underneath the clouds it will be like maybe a very light warm yellow color. Or maybe a cooler yellow would be nicer. I'm thinking the fishes, like the flying fish all around. They can probably be orange, and the lamps, probably a cool blue kind of glow, and traffic lights are just normal colors, this one will be red, and this whale will be like a bluish gray color. So yeah, basically I'm just envisioning this whole thing is dark, above the clouds, a few different colors scattered everywhere, like the fish and the signs, and the whale, they're all going to be different colors. So I'm trying to make it very colorful, but also like be organized in a way. Anyways, we also have to mask a few things with um, masking fluid. And I'm just going to be using this brush and you can see it's all like gummed up because I always use this brush with my masking fluid. I'm probably going to mask like the water and some things from the foreground and then I'm gonna just color in the background first so normally I mask everything in the foreground and then like do a, like a blanket color over the background and then I continue to add detail from there I finished up covering up all the spots that I want to keep clean for now so now we can get started on this section without worrying about covering all these water droplets I don't know what color I'm going to do yet, so I think it would be nice to do a gradient actually, maybe from the bottom up. Color I think would be like a darkish blue at the bottom, and then it fades into like turquoise kind of color maybe. When I finished with this gradient, I'll just let it dry and maybe go over it like with another coat. Because these colors are looking kind of washed out right now. So when coloring something just one color, for example with this whale I want it to be kind of a purple issue, uh, it's good to just have different shades and different types of that same color. So in front this is kind of a more grayish purple, and this is more of a pinkish purple and a reddish purple here. And just having um, a bunch of different shades of the same color will also make it much more interesting to look at. After all of this dries, I'm probably gonna add like some more layers and a little bit of detail and stuff. And then I'm gonna peel off the masking fluid. Yeah, but for now we can work on this bottom section. To kind of know when I'm planning colors is when I use the colors like up here like the blue and the green and the yellowish color uh, they reappeared over here in the form of like these colors so when you like use the same color in different spots of the picture it also like creates a very harmonious kind of look um, which is very pleasing to look at here I also masked some parts of the paper and basically when I paint over like the lines will show where I masked, masked it and I'm just trying to create like a cloud look so it's like since this whole thing is like a blanket of clouds there will be like a few columns or a few like huge puffs of clouds rising up as well. Anyways, now I'm basically just painting over a few spots just to figure out where I masked the stuff and what the parts look like so I can plan for like um, shading it later. To be honest, when doing a lot of these, I think you just have to have a lot of patience because it's just a lot of planning and a lot of like layers and building up things until you can get the effect you want. Everything, uh, all the like base stuff has been done. 
can peel off the masking fluid here and then finish up the water. Maybe add a few details to the whale and then that will like transition into this whole part. These kinds of like small droplets, I also go over them with a white pen. You don't really need a white pen, but it just makes everything much easier. Especially if you want to add like more white droplets, um, I can just put it straight on. I would say that they're really good for like cleaning up. Especially if you have really small and precise details. Okay, we can add some like yellow highlights to the water here. Just because yellow is a complementary color to purple, it might look better. Because right now, like all these colors, like the blue and the green and the purple, they're all like relatively like near each other on the color wheel. So if we throw in something that's like on the opposite side, it can have a different effect. This part of the whale, like the white parts that haven't been colored in, those were left by the masking fluid. It was on, it was an accident, but I kind of like it because now we can fill these in with like a different highlight colors. So I think the whale looks fine now. For this part where the water is leaking out, I have um, kind of an idea. So I think this color I will drag all the way down. So this will be the color of the water leaking out. Um, but underneath this will be like dark, kind of like a blackish color. And it will slowly become a gradient that melts with this light blue color as the water drips all the way down. And I've also noticed that there's a lot of blue and green and uh, areas of that kind of color all around this piece. So like different spots here and in the water and the sky and stuff like that. So um, I think it might be good to include something that's just red or orange. Something that's very like bright and warm. Uh, so the only red I have right now is this one that's very noticeable. So if I make the clouds tinted red, I think it will provide a good contrast and a good balance of colors. Because right now, it's a, very, it's a very blue piece. Um, I think it would be a good idea to include like an orangey reflection in the water. And we can dilute it and tone it down a bit with water. basically expose the white part of the watercolor paper underneath and then um, I can add some more detail. The type of cloud that I'm picturing is kind of like a dark thundercloud but instead of like the normal gray or black it's gonna be red. So if you can like imagine like a red thundercloud that's the kind of look that I'm going for. I'm gonna leave white and those will be the highlights of the cloud and then these bluer parts will be darker and it will show like the fluffiness and depth of the cloud. Of course the red from like this side of like the background clouds has to blend into the ones like that are pinned over here so I'm going to have to find a way to blend that all together. Be pretty cool to Make like this bottom part look uh, like look like it's not just like flat, but also kind of fluffy. So I'm gonna make some parts like rise up a bit, and hopefully that will give more dimension to this picture. The wheel is getting kind of muddied, and like the line 
they're not as crisp anymore and the colors from the water are kind of bleeding into it as well in some areas so I think I'm gonna reline the whale and touch up on the water too and maybe add a few more colors into it some more contrast by adding darker areas um, where the whale meets the water. Right now I still need to clean up some lines. Like you can faintly see like the outline of the water, however it's not crisp and it's pretty messy so far. So I'm just gonna retrace the lines and add some more highlights. super neat process like it you don't really have to stay within the lines I think I feel like I like the colors to blend into each other so the red will become parts of the whale as well and of course though after I finish after I finish drying I'm gonna have to reline them to define where the fish is but then again the color is still like seeping out the problems I find so far is that since there's so much of everything, like there's the water, the paper, the airplanes, the lights, the poles, like everything gets kind of muddled. And without like strong contrasts between each object, so for example the black that I added and the darker colors that I added between like the wheel and the water, it's hard to tell them apart or it might not look as good. I think contrast and using like black and dark colors is a super useful tool. So don't be afraid of like using dark colors, especially black in certain areas, because they can be very helpful. section and basically while one section dries I'm gonna work on the other section till I like like how it looks and then I'll stop and then maybe like retrace some things yeah so that's basically the order of things that I'm gonna do right now sky over here still needs a lot more reworking I'm just gonna start by darkening the edges of the clouds here to create that contrast again and then also like blend the colors inwards start to look more proper and not as messy as it is right now. So I feel like I could have done this a bit more efficiently. Like uh, I shouldn't have to have like so many layers and so many like uh, relinings and stuff like that. But I don't know, 
this is just how I normally do things. I feel like there's just so much more color and detail you can add this way. Although you do not need them, I feel like I since I got them, I've begun to like rely on them a lot for a bunch of like effects and stuff. So I guess they're pretty useful. If you get them, I'm pretty sure there's so many ways you could use them to enhance your own art. And finally, I'm just gonna line some of these clouds because it's almost like I kind of want to create an effect of there's like layer upon layer of clouds building up to the top here. I'm not sure how to do that because I've never tried to do that before. Even if it doesn't work out, anything in white I think always looks good. So I can just play this part off if it turns out badly as something else. I'm actually not sure about this. It doesn't really look like layers of clouds. It kind of looks like sea waves in a way. Like waves just converging to the middle. And it's not a bad look. So yeah, I think I'll keep it like this. The paper that I'm using now, which is a uh, Canson watercolor paper, is actually surprisingly really good. It's really durable because I used a bunch of like watercolor washes on it. Like I kept painting over the same parts in different colors over and over again. So it obviously like bended, it warped a bit, but it's not like completely unusable. Like you could still put watercolor on those areas, which I'm really surprised. Yeah, I feel like this is a good paper. It's pretty cheap too. It's great for beginners, so if you're starting out in watercolor, I would definitely recommend this paper. It's pretty awesome, and if you're not used to controlling water and stuff, you don't really have to worry about the water paper like dying on you. <laughs> There's not much else to do. I think the final step um, would be to just add like maybe some small designs on these pieces of paper and on the cover covers of the book. I don't know what to draw though. Maybe I'll draw some stars. I am officially done now and I hope that you guys enjoyed this commentary as I walk through like each step of how we do things. I hope it helped you guys a bit if you were having an art block or were a beginner or just needed like some kind of inspiration. And as always, thanks for watching and bye guys! Thank you.